All right, let's get started. Thanks everyone for attending this presentation. The topic today is practical natural language processing with Grow NLP. My name is Xin Jian Shi, and I'm an applied scientist at AWS Deep Engine Science. We know that natural language processing has been a very important technique behind lots of real-world applications, for example, search engine and building chatbots. Let's first review what are the possible tasks of NLP. And for example, the NLP can help you build models that can analyze sentiment, whether the user's comments are positive or negative. And also NLP can help you build models that can do topic analysis. That is, we can distinguish whether the input document has the topic that is related to sports or it's related to music. And also, NLP can help you really analyzing the structure of the input document. We have tasks that try to find the part of the speech tagging of each a token in the sentence, and also we have tasks called name entity recognition in which we need to recognize the meaningful entities from the source sentence. This can help you build reading comprehension models, for example, to build a question answering model in which you can answer the question by reading a document. And also there is a very important task in natural language processing is to generate some sentences. For example, in machine translation, we need to translate from one sentence, maybe in English, to another sentence. And then we also have the story generation in which we need to generate the story based on the user's provided context. OK, so now, now we know that there are lots of NLP ap applications what is the state of art for building the model? For uh, today, the answer is short. We can say that the state of art is based on this pre-trained language model. Acqu according to the GROW benchmark, the new models that rely on the pre-trained language model can surpass the human performance. And the leapfrog point starts uh, based on the BIRD model and later on, some improvements like Roberta, Electra, and T5, they can surpass the human performance in this school task. So what is this pre-trained language model about? This is about a new way for solving NLP applications. We first pre-train the model on a large unlabeled corpus by different kinds of objective functions. And after that, we use this pre-trained model to solve downstream applications, for example, for a text prediction, for NER, for summarization. This makes NLP to be very similar as computer vision, because in computer vision we have the REST net to extract the features from the image, and now in NLP we have the BERT-like models to extract the representation from the sentence. We know that nowadays these pre-trained language models can give you amazing performance boost, but it's still difficult for developers to really unleash the power of these SOTA NLP models. And here is the uh, what GROP can do. So here is uh, what our mission and what we are trying to help. So here, GrowLP brings the best of deep learning NLP research to industry data scientists and application developers. We have three uh, parts in GrowLP. So first of all, we know that it's very difficult to build NLP applications because sometimes the uh, NLP models are quite complicated. So in GrowLP, we keep a bunch of well-designed APIs that are tailored for building NLP models. This include APIs for tokenization, for doing uh, sampling of uh, sentences, to doing bucketing sampling, and to write attention-based models. 
and also we know that here the state of the art uh, models are based on this pre trained backbone models. So we offered a bunch of pre trained backbones, and including, for example, the bird, Albert, and Electra. Thus, if the user wants to build models on top of these backbones, he can just call our, our API and uh, grab this uh, pre trained model and use it. The third part is we know that for developers, especially for industry, deployment is very important. So here in Global P, we offered some, some solutions which are based on other third-party deployment solutions. For example, MKLDN, TensorRT, and TVN. We integrate with these other packages to give our users the solution for fast deployment. Thus, the goal of Grown P it is simple. In, in summary, we we want to be fast in speed, and also we, we like to be flexible enough so that the user can use this package to write new models. Now, Grown P is upgrading to 1.0. Compared with the old version, the Grown P 0.x 1.0 has some improvements in multiple, a multiple aspects. The first uh, major improvement of 1.0 is starting from 1.0, we will adopt MXNet 2.0 as one of the backend. And the major feature of MXNet 2.0 is it offers the NumPy like programming interface so that the user can understand the source code of GrowP as long as the user only understands NumPy. And also, we have improved our APIs for these uh, NLP-based APIs, including the tokenization and how we write the attention cells. And also, we find that NLP is not only related to neural networks. Sometimes there are other uh, techniques, for example, subword learning and data cleaning. So we offered the data, pro data processing tools Put NLP process to help you uh, call some common processing pipelines. And also to help people reproduce the state of the art pre training models, we have this NLP data, and you can use that to fetch some uh, large corpus for pre training. And also in Grown P 1.0, we have more backbones, including, for example, the XM Roberta, Albert, Electra, and MobileBot. And we offered a bunch of examples to teach you how to use this package, in which I will briefly explain later. So here in Grown P 1.0, we have run, uh, we have fine tuned. Uh, the backbones in this package on the squad 2.0 dataset and here are the results. All these results are based on MXNet 2.0 and we used Horrorworld and the automatic mixed pre precision training support in MXNet 2.0. So here we can see that the Albert base takes one hour for training and uh, I forgot to mention that these uh, experiments are conducted on an EC2 G412 instance that uses the G4 GPU and has uh, four GPUs per instance. And here we can see the Albert base takes 1.26 hours, and if we convert that to cost, it means it cost uh, around five dollars in EC2. And it, and it can reach the validation F1 and exact match score equals to 82% to 79% correspondingly. And here are the numbers on score 2.0 for other backbones. Also, you, we can see that for Electrolarge, it can achieve, uh, achieve validation F1 equals to 90.6% 90, uh, 90 so uh, it is, uh, it can achieves a state-of-the-art on the score 2.0. 
And we know that the uh, pre-training scripts are also very important because sometimes the user want to pre-train on their own data. So we provided scripts that are able to help you uh, pre-train with different kinds of pre-training objectives. This include the, for example, in the Albert paper, they propose the sentence order prediction objective. And uh, we also have the mask language model objective. And also we have the replace token detection objective in Electra. We have implemented this bunch of objective uh, pre-training objective functions. And we tried to train a bird-based model on Wikipedia plus board corpus with SOP plus MLM. And we we have released the weights of this pre-trained model. We call it grow one ENK's bird-based V1. And we compared the fine-tuning performance of this model with the bird-based model released by Google on the score 2.0 dataset. And we can see that uh, using our scripts, we can achieve better F1 score and uh, exact match score on the score 2.0 dataset. And we have examples for machine translation. Because for machine translation, it's very common that you have a large parallel corpus. And the first step is really to learn the sub word from this parallel corpus. And nowadays, there are lots of different kinds of sub word learning algorithms. To uh, simplify this sub word learning algorithm, we provided this NLP process learn sub word so that you can just call the NLP process CRI to uh, learn the sub word. And we have integrated with different kinds of subword learning libraries so that uh, it will be uh, very simple to use and you can use it to train subword on your own datasets. And after you've trained subword, you can call NLP process apply subword to tokenize the dataset into uh, so, uh, tokenize the sentence into subword tokens. And also to facilitate the machine translation, we have implemented different kinds of bucketing strategies, like the sorted bucket, bucket sampler, and fixed bucket sampler. And we have also uh, implemented a new sampler called bounded budget sampler, in which we ensure that the each batch will be within the budget that the user has specified. So after we have uh, adopted this NLP process and the uh, bucketing sampling and also the backward models in GrowLP, we run experiments on the WMT 2014 dataset. We can find that for the transformer-based model, we can achieve 26.95 blue score. For the large model, it's 27.99 blue score. And we also tried the transformer base model with pre-layer normaliza pre normalization, which achieves 26.81 performance. So uh, that is close to the, uh, what the other papers report. We also offer the example of sequence generation. For sequence generation, there are multiple ways to sample from the generator. Thus, we implemented multiple sequence samplers, including the uh, basic multinomial sampling, beam search, and also we implemented the top K and top P sampling, and we implemented the stochastic beam search. And in our generation example, we use the GPT-2 in GrowMP to generate sentences, and we evaluate the quality and diversity of the generated samples achieved by different samplers. And that's uh, in the example of uh, that, that's in the example showing the following link. Also, to help people uh, deploy the grow up models, we integrated with TBN. And here are some uh, performance comparisons between grow up plus TBN versus Hugging Face plus Torch, Torch Script. And we use bird base as the backbone model. And we try to see the inference speed with different kinds of batch size and sequence length. So here we can see uh, if we use TVM, the 
overall latency is lower than a hugging face plus torch script and in some cases it can give uh, give you a 2x speed up and all experiments are conducted in g4 instance uh, with the fp32 precision also we have released the grumpy docker the reason for adding the docker is because we find that sometimes it's difficult for users to uh, try try out uh, to install some of the dependencies for example the horror world so we build the docker in which we have pre-installed lots of useful dependencies like mxnet 2.0 tensorboard grumpy horror world and tbn and now the now the user can simply call Docker Pro, Grow AI, Grow RP, GPU latest to get our Docker and launch a development environment. Okay, so now next let's give a very quick demo of the Grow RP Docker. So here the uh, detailed instruction of the Grow RP Docker is in the Docker folder of our repository you can switch to the master branch and go to tools docker so okay so here uh, what I have done is I have created a new EC2 instance and then let's first uh, pull the docker it's a GrowRP GPU latest so since for me I have uh, already got this pull so it takes no time and uh, after that let's run this docker to launch an environment and what I'm going to do is I will run the uh, squad 2.0 fine-tuning experiments based on the docker and uh, now we just run this scripts so internally it will use horror plus AMP plus MXNet 2.0 to fine-tune uh, uh, the squad 2.0 and we can see currently uh, it's it's running. So in case you have any uh, issues about GrowRP, and uh, you are if you are interested in this GrowRP 1.0, feel free to contact me or uh, post issues in our GrowRP GitHub repo, and uh, we are we are happy to help. And that's all for this presentation. Thanks.